Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I hope to continue aiming for the moon using the Swift and we are also waiting on some developments in terms of the tracking station upgrade in 93 days and the stability early probes technology in 78 days and that will give us uh, rudimentary solar panels and that will hopefully give us patched conics so we can see our encounter with the moon. So that is the idea and I'll well, let's go into VAB and take a look at a SWIFT. We don't have one building just yet and I want to talk about potential changes. Okay so the first thing I need to address is that I updated uh, fuse box. I don't know if that actually puts it with the right right uh, settings for this well it says earth so that's hopeful so I think it's got the right settings for a real solar system now okay so we'll have hopefully a good reading now yes uh, but I don't believe it for a second uh, here let's see um, let's say we slip this off okay well that makes more sense three hours okay good I buy that all right so now, uh, the question of using the Able Avionics package, uh, note that it has a capacity of 5 tons which is too little for our current stage here even if we took the, the guidance unit and moved it down, the guidance unit is four, uh, 0.4 tons. Um, so that is the problem and it does have a lower electric charge consumption, it has 9 per minute instead of 60 per minute. However, it would be simpler for the overall design if I simply slipped in a battery to handle the time that uh, we would continue having this guidance unit uh, connected. And so let's see, I think it was, uh, I mean, if we take a look at the amount needed for each orbit, let's say an orbit is 90 minutes. And so we're talking about 5,400 units per orbit around the Earth. So how big a battery do we need for that? Well, that's the right size there. For one orbit, we would need a 0.02 kilogram battery. Let's take a look. Okay, so 12,600. So it's a 35 meter per second loss in that case. So we can get an extra orbit like that. And I think I'll do that. That should get us to the moon if we want to try that out. I could just add it to that container already. This tank is a future fuselage tank that should work but anyway this is fine too okay so that'll be our new configuration I don't think 35 meters per second will do too much damage to the situation now we were overshooting a bit so actually we could uh, increase the electric charge here and decrease the fuel now remember the the point of putting more electric charge here wasn't just to uh, satisfy that problem it was also to reduce the delta V because we were going too far so it was supposed to so solve both problems and I'm so I'm just gonna add a little bit more let's say uh, let's remove these these guys and go to 7500 units 3122 I think we can try that out uh, maybe I want 3130 which is what I think I said on a previous occasion yeah, let me uh, say 7400. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, 3128. Oh, uh, it's two stage. It's got a staging question mark there. Okay, I think it's fine though. Maybe. In theory, the payload itself has how much? Uh, well, it says 23 days. I don't know if this is, well it says Earth. I don't know about, uh, well and, but but now uh, down here if we keep this uh, connected, five hours. 
Okay. We'll see. So, a uh, tiny modification, but I'll still call this the Swift 1B. And we'll try it. Okay, after a 34 day construction time, the Swift 1B is on the launch pad. Let's go. The first thing we'll need to do is, of course, line up with the right longitude of ascending node for, for lining up with the inclination of the moon. But after that, we will head out. Okay, I think we can go from here. Uh, everything looks nominal. Throttle up. SAS on. So, uh, just a reminder, we don't have any contract for the moon yet. This is just a proof of concept flight. A simulation, if you will, even though we have to pay for it. Because I'm not doing simulations like that. Okay, so, yep, that's the situation. Uh, but I think it's worth it, so here we go. Alright, looking good. Lots of TWR already at 2 G's of acceleration. We are well past the speed of sound now. Okay, we'll hold here for booster separation. Boosters are off. Okay, very good. And they collided. Okay, that's fine. Trying to restrain the time to apoapsis as this stage gets to its uh, maximum G load. Okay, switching to SAS for the Vanguard stage. Okay, set. And the Vanguard is ignited. Very good. I think we can get rid of the fairings. Gotta lock the battery on the probe. Not on the probe core, but on this body here. Maybe I should lock the probe core as well, but probably not necessary. Okay, very good. Let's switch to SES. Stage set. And ignition. Alright, looks good for orbit. I need to fix staging here. I forgot one of those little thrusters actually burns for longer than the others. So I hope that doesn't cause any problems this time. It didn't previously. Okay, technically past apoapsis a bit, but we're actually hovering around it. Okay, and off. Okay, 265, let's say, by 250. 239, uh, 293 meters per second left, 10 seconds of burn time. And we're keeping this stage on because it's got the maneuvering thrusters and the nitrous oxide. Alright, let me take a look at the situation. Uh, still can't target the moon or anything like that. We seem to be in line with it just fine. I think that's us, yeah. And if we position ourselves there, we're definitely not in the right phase angle, but it should take about half an orbit. Let's see, uh, if we're 
we were around here at that point. So we'll learn from Australia again. Okay, we have connection. Let's see. Is that 115 or so? I guess. Tough with the eccentricity of the orbit. But alright. Let's move the electric charge up if it's not up already. Oh, we can't move stuff. Well, that's fine. Uh, we've got uh, more than we had before. So that's okay. I'll unlock that as well for now. Right. So, um, yep, just prograde. RCS. Oh, right. So Smart ESS is not good at doing it. Hold on, I'll just uh, use SAS and do it myself. We've got enough to spare, I think. Okay, we look pretty much lined up there. So let's see what 3,128 meters per second does for us, whether it gets us to the moon's orbit or short or whatever. Okay, um, nothing else I can do. Set. Oh, let me throttle up. Ooh. Set. Okay, looks good. Well, a little bit off. Going like that. Sunrise there. Gotta fix those little, uh, little, uh, ullage rockets. Should have been placed with symmetry, I don't know why they have an imbalance. Now I'm sort of also practicing for using solid rockets for this, so I'm not going to turn it off. I don't think I have the re reflexes anyway. Okay, well we're still a little bit past. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have like been able to catch it or anything. Uh, especially with the lag, so it's alright. But I guess we can use X and Z to control the throttle, we just can't continuously throttle it. Okay. Well, now we have five days worth of juice, which should be enough. Our apoapsis is, well, not indicating how many days, but that says five days and 13 hours. So, just enough uh, to get to apoapsis. Hopefully, the moon will be there at some point. Let's see. I don't know. I think we're still going to allow it to slip by. Maybe we'll lose connection and we'll meet over here, actually. Oh, well. Don't worry, we'll have uh, solar panels pretty soon, and that'll that'll fix this part of it. Oh, we have a we have a lunar flyby after all. Very high periapsis, twenty-seven thousand kilometers. That won't be good enough for the contracts, but uh, how's about that? We have connection. Let's do some science. Okay. Analyze telemetry, high over the moon. I don't know why, yeah, okay. Um, record impact data, high over the moon. Okay, a lot of temperature data, nine signs there. And log radiation data. Okay, so this was sort of a success. Still a little bit far out. We hit lunar periapsis with electric charge. This is what the moon and earth look like from here. We're on the far side of both. So, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I guess we'll just be leaving this little guy in orbit for now. Okay, success! Uh, let's go back to the Space Center and decide what to do next.
Well, it's a good thing I checked the contract screen, because we do have a science day from space around the moon, which we technically just did. I'll send some null data to satisfy this. Let's pick it up. I think that'll be good. Uh, the flyby mission, as I expected, uh, requires below 5,000 kilometers, so our current vessel does not satisfy that. Uh, so, yep, yeah, let me quickly get this and see if I can get the completion for it. Um, well, it says, well, that's right, insufficient avionics is correct. Uh, electric charge is still present. We still have connection. Where are we? Oh, we're like that. Okay. High pass over. Okay, so just to gain credit for what we just did, that's all I'm doing. So I'll send this null data for credit for that. Okay, and is the contract satisfied? Yep. Okay, so that is done. So I've basically done all I can do with the Swift as is. I could potentially get it below 5,000 kilometers around the moon, but it'd be best to have have better technology to do that with and the tracking station upgrade. So I'm just going to time warp through this. We'd only have time for one more launch if we just uh, uh, tried to launch it one more time. So I don't think it's worth it. I think we should get the upgrades first. So let me warp through this. Oh, warp stop due to SOI change. Vessel name Swift 1B unloaded. Okay, I uh, didn't realize it would stop my warp to complete when an SOI change occurred, but that's nice. Continuing. Right, so now we got the early probes. Uh, technology and so I'm going to build a new version of our payload and we'll see how that works out okay so let's go through the changes that I've made um, they have been a lot I've obviously added the solar panels and uh, they're angled like this on the logic that this thing is gonna be spinning right so I don't know how well the system will read their reception of sunlight but uh, we'll be we'll be perpendicular to the sun, sort of. I think this will work. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, the configuration of the solar panels. But I've dumped all electric charge from this body and replaced it with hydrazine because now we can set the little thrusters to hydrazine the, instead of nitrous oxide. So these attitude jets are using hydrazine. And I've used the smallest ones because they have less mass, 0.0015 tons and I put them on here because that will allow me to make fine adjustments uh, to push us to the moon. Now of course it's only a fine adjustment in the direction of flight uh, prograde. Uh, so I have deliberately left this short of delta V so that we will be able to give the final push with the RCS system. Uh, hopefully that will work out, we'll see. So it's short about uh, 80 meters per second and the ISP of hydrazine thrusters is about the same as the XASR. So the XASR has uh, 218, the hydrazine thrusters have 212. Now I could have just used the hydrazine thrusters and made a long burn out of it, but I didn't think that was as good as having the swift kick of the XASR. So that's why I'm going with this version. I might reconsider that after this flight, we'll see. I've retained the extra battery here to, uh, not that one, uh, the blue stripe there for the orbit and lining up with our burn. And, well, we'll see whether Australia will still work out for us. I think we were very lucky in the timing on the previous one. We might have to burn at a different point this time depends on what the situation is in 41 days. Uh, we'll have to see. We were pretty lucky in our situation there. So I've replaced the nitrous oxide with hydrazine. I've configured these for hydrazine. I have also taken off the extra boosters. So all we're using here are the baby sergeants. I hope that the baby sergeants will, enough, will be enough to light this rocket. I don't know. Uh, so that simplifies that stage. We will see how that works. Okay. So yeah, that's Swift 1C for you. I think that's all the important parts. Oh, I did fix these separation motors. Well, I thought I did. Um, 
Okay, yeah, they all have uh, 2.5, so that should be right. Okay, yep, all is good, and we will see how this works. Let's start building it after I package it up. Now, we'll have the tracking station upgrade in 14 days, just in time, and uh, we will have this finished building in 41 days. We could rush it, but I don't see any need. I will, however, pick up the contract. So we got a lot of stuff now, and so lunar flyby, uncrewed, below 5,000 kilometers, any experiment. We'll try and get low over the moon this time, and so I will accept this contract. If we don't do low over the moon, I'll still beam back null signs for it, but yeah. Something is wrong here. Position satellite in a specific orbit of Pluto. Might be going a bit far, huh? Yeah, something is definitely not kosher with those. Science data from space around Earth we can do. I mean, these we can all do. Uh, I mean, pa satellite I should be doing anyway. Yeah. It needs a barometer, but I think we can do that. one year yeah let's uh, build a satellite that can fulfill these sorts of contracts and uh, take both of these up um, inclination is a bit weird yep inclination is a bit weird let's pick this one up it wants a circular orbit though and a high one. Easier to do a lower one. Mm -hmm. The higher one would be more useful. Before anybody mentions it, I did notice that we had the Delta Probe Core now and the Agena Probe Core. So those could be useful for this sort of thing. Alright, what the hey, we'll try it. Try both of them. We should probably get one of them cooking while this one's going on, so let me try and build one. Okay, so lots of unlocking done, lots of interesting problems. What we have here is, so I've unlocked the Delta Avionics package, this early controllable core. And you can see the early controllable core is what I've put on top here. Don't know if that's a great idea, but it takes less electric charge than the Delta Avionics package for sure. So that's a positive. In theory, I don't need to keep control. I could use the Explorer 1 probe as my satellite core. I sort of like the idea of being able to control my satellite. So yeah, I, I'm going with this. Uh, it's filled with hydrazine and, of course, electric charge. And we've got more hydrazine here. Note the utilization is 19%. That's because I simply needed space to put the solar panels. So that's why it's as big as it is. And uh, we've got... Uh, now, the limit here is 0.2 tons. And you can see we're at 0.199 tons. That gives us 1,033 delta V using another part I've unlocked. The generic one kilonewton thruster. That's right, we've done it. We've got the essential thing. Um, it's it's not great. We are running, of course, hydrazine with it. And it has much less efficiency than these little guys. These little guys have 212 with hydrazine. Oops. This one, this is hydrazine configured 187.2 only. And that's with the tech level we've got now. But it is restartable and it does not need ullage. So I'll take it. Uh, but the low ISP was why I didn't put it with the lunar probe anyway. Didn't want to mess with that too much. Now, electric charge situation. You'll note that it says gen 0.13 per second and drain 0.07, which means that if only half of our solar panels are facing, and that's the most that would be facing solar input at any given time. Um, that doesn't look like it's enough. 
my problem is um, if we just take a look at the probe core the probe core says um, 3 per minute which means uh, 0.05 per second and so then it'd be enough uh, then uh, the solar panels we've got according to my calculations I just tally them up uh, it uh, says 45.4 per hour I wish they just always have per second but uh, it's 0.063 per second so that's our uh, generation off of one side okay but what about the antennae well the antennae say uh, zero charge per second and yet when I put it on put them on that changes so that means there is a drain I guess what we will do is just put two maybe it'll be better that way if we just put two I'll tilt them down since I'm not entirely clear how much electric charge they actually take so that's the problem now I've put the barometer as required so let's take a look at the contract I'm gonna aim for this low altitude weirdly inclined inclination 148.6 degrees okay so we're basically launching backwards incline it's weird um, we'll see how that works out we could I don't know if 1076 plus the launcher will be enough to get to this high one we could try for that but anyway it does require a barometer so we've got that and because we haven't done the orbital perturbation experiment before I've got that on too and I'll action group those now I've already action grouped the antennae to toggle them uh, no not toggle display okay so you've got that pretty expensive it's 4376 all on its own but uh, well if it works it works the launcher is good I've added the Delta here uh, and moved the this uh, guy unit down so maybe that'll help but uh, yep that's how it looks okay 58 days though that's a long time now we don't have any alloge rockets on the top no spinning or anything like that because we we're using the one kilonewton thruster which does not require that as so and I've called it com tub one because it sort of looks like a tub actually uh, earlier configurations looked even more like a tub so that's why that is the case okay everything looks decent I guess save and we'll build this one 9000 but the advance gave us enough for that so hopefully you'll be alright alright warping to complete the tracking station you know what can we set up contract alarms well uh, there's no curb alarm clock in here yeah maybe this there's a configuration in here contract alarms auto create okay well uh, all contracts okay there we go there we go should have known uh, curve alarm clocks and uh, old stalwart uh, would have uh, adapted to that all right very good so warping to complete the Swift 1C. Oh, another SOI change for the Swift 1A. Swift 1B is there. Swift 1A is on its way out. Okay. Okay, so here we go. First try for the lunar flyby contract and we'll see how it goes in theory all I need is for everything go to go the same way except for the very end portion where we'll, we will use the hydrazine to boost us to the right location but that's theory for you throttles up SAS is on ignition and launch
Okay, smart ASS has it. And once again, before I know it, we are past the speed of sound. We're past Mach 1.5 by now. Booster set. Okay. And they're off. They don't actually collide. It's just the aerodynamic stress that takes the engine off. I didn't notice that before. Yeah. So they don't actually collide. It's actually the aerodynamic stress. So even if we tried, they wouldn't be recoverable because they just lose the engine like that. Hmm. It's just going too fast. Sort of an unfair advantage to SRBs in that case. I understand that the SRB pricing is fixed. I haven't tried that out yet. Probably should. Not quite the trajectory I had last time. Not quite as good. Let's see how the transition to the Vanguard works with just these Ollage rockets. Half the Ollage that we had before. Set. Ignition. Okay, it works. Okay, and fairing set. Okay, looking good. Let's extend some antennae. I don't know why our power generation is zero. The solar panel should be receiving direct sunlight, yeah. Sun exposure 0.16, energy flow zero. Oh, uh, maybe because I've locked this battery. Not sure that makes sense. Should still work for this, right? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know why there is no energy flow. Well, now there's some. A little bit. Okay, time to switch. Set. Ignition. All right. Okay, we flattened out. Thirty seconds left in the stage. Fifteen seconds to apoapsis. I haven't even used the tracking station thing. I could have probably targeted the moon. Should have done that. Okay, 293 by 270. 215 meters per second left thanks to the higher orbit and the fact that the launch wasn't exactly right. But let's get this thing done. So, can I target the moon? Yeah, set as target. We are 0.7 degrees off. And can we make a maneuver node? Looks like we'll have to go around a little bit longer. Let's see. Yeah, I think we'll have to make pretty much a whole orbit before doing this. Let's say we started out around here. So, yeah, maneuver nodes. I don't know if I can do it there. It depends how quickly we acquire at uh, the west coast whether I can start the burn there I think it'll be better to hmm let's see okay so somewhat strangely we are actually aiming for an off-plane transfer we're actually burning out of one of the nodes and hitting it close to its descending node rather than uh, aiming for exactly a home and transfer you can see we actually go past this might not be a good thing considering our power consumption. It depends on whether these solar panels actually do their job. 
Well, let's hope. We've got uh, the electric charge up there still locked. And we've got three hours of battery li worth of battery life. According to that, though, really we just have one orbit. And one orbit is exactly what we need right now. Okay, so let's hope uh, now uh, the planet will rotate a bit. So uh, I've got the node here. But hopefully as the planet rotates we'll still be in connection. Let's go around and see. We are currently here. The Swift 1A could help. That one. Unless that has no more power. Oh, it can help. It probably shouldn't have any power. Okay, we have connection and the maneuver is coming up close. Okay, so um, I'll just manually take it to the maneuver node. We could probably do with a lot less hydrazine than I've got here, but... Okay. Gotta unlock the battery up here now. Uh, thrall up. And... Cross your fingers. Off we go. Still a little bit off. Three days only. But we're not really facing the sun at all. Okay, hold on, hold off on the RCS. Oh, can I, I can't shut it off? Uh, uh, no, I wanted to shut off the RCS. It's just uh, keeping on firing. No, 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 no. Uh, I thought, uh, okay, uh, shut, no, go down, go down. Okay, okay, that works. Jeez. Um, all right. So, X and Z, not the throttle lever. Okay, so, um, Z? Hold on, X for a bit. Hmm, I think we have to, uh, go around the other way, maybe. I hope, otherwise, uh, we've already gone past. Uh, I think we've already missed it, but hold on. Yeah, I think we already missed uh, the right number. Dang it! Yeah, yeah, this is way off. And I probably can't flip, well, I know I can't flip it around. Alright, so this attempt failed. Uh, because I wasn't quick enough on, and I probably should have just cut it once I saw that it was a periapsis less than 5,000 kilometers. We had an opportunity there. But we can't flip it around. I think, I think I should just retire this style of probe. Does it seem to be, I don't know, are we eventually going to get, uh, Hey, persistent rotation was supposed to keep the rotation going. I was relying on the persistent rotation. I wanted to keep rotating. Darn it. Things just don't work out sometimes. But yeah, we're not getting the right solar input like this. I think... This system will need a redesign before I try for the moon again. Let's do something a little bit more robust. Something a lot more like the ComSat that I'm planning. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Alright, so uh, with this attempt at uh, fulfilling the contract, we've done a lunar flyby. We just didn't want do one uh, close enough. Uh, yep, uh, we will uh, continue on. 
and try again in the next episode. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.